Hello everyone and welcome to a series of videos this time on the subject of contestable markets. This first video is an introduction to the concept. So we're going to start with a thinking task for you. Which of the following are usually used to indicate market structure? The number of firms in a market, product differentiation, concentration ratio and barriers to entry. Pause the video just for a few moments if you need to. Well, the answer, of course, is usually it's all of these. Now, the difference with contestable market theory is that we're not looking at how the market actually is in terms of its number of firms and so on. But there's a recognition that much more important is potential competition. Is there a credible threat of entry from rivals currently outside of the market? And I've got another thinking task here for you. Why might these competitive firms currently be outside of the market? Pause the video just for a minute or two while you give some thought to this. Welcome back, everyone. What reasons did you come up with? Well, there's a number of possible reasons. Perhaps the barriers to entry are too high to make it worth entering. Perhaps the firms in the market at the moment are only earning normal profits, so there is no incentive. Uh, perhaps there's such brand loyalty to the firms in the market that customers, consumers wouldn't switch. These are all possible reasons. So let's have a look at some of the key conditions for a contestable market to exist. Well, the first one, of course, is there does need to be a pool of new businesses willing and ready to enter the market. And App Developers gives us quite a good example of this. There can't be any significant entry or exit costs. Um, the firms outside of the market, this is an assumption of contestable market theory, must have equal access to the available industry technologies. They must be able to come in and compete on the same basis. And there must be a high rate of customer churn. So the consumers in that market must be willing to switch to the new entrance. So here we have on this slide a bit of a summary and some extra points as well. So almost all markets are contestable to a degree, but there's quite a big difference in terms of the degree of contestability. Uh, we can see contestable markets at local, regional, national and international level. The key, key thing is that in a contestable market, the number of firms and the size distribution of the firms isn't the vital thing. Um, contestable markets often show really high dynamic efficiency with challenger brands attacking established operators. And technological change is changing contestability all of the time. So, for example, we might well see digital advances um, significantly changing barriers to entry. And quite a lot of startups are able to use the Internet as a platform to enter markets. And the top tip, the top takeaway tip in all of this, contestable markets are constantly changing. There we are. That's an end to our first 
introductory video on the subject of contestable markets. 